Welcome to this talk about Windows Presentation Foundation with .NET from tutorialer.com slash talks. .NET is a free, modern, open source cross-platform framework from Microsoft that allows developers to build applications and services for cloud, mobile, IoT, and more, along with web and desktop. .NET includes improvements or new features every year, with even-numbered long-term releases supported for three years, and odd-numbered short-term releases supported for 18 months. .NET includes c -sharp, which is the open-source programming language for modern software development, featuring type safety, asynchronous programming, and is also updated each year. .NET applications can be developed for any device or platform, such as Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. Find out more about the latest version of .NET, which includes the latest version of C-sharp by visiting .NET. That's D-O-T .NET. Blaze allows developers to create beautiful, full-stack web applications using the power of .NET and C-sharp without needing to write any JavaScript. Blazor is a modern front-end web framework based on HTML, CSS, and C-sharp to help create web applications quickly using reusable components. Blazor components can be run in a browser with WebAssembly or on a server with ASP.NET Core or embedded in native hybrid applications. Install ASP.NET and Web Development Workload for Visual Studio to use Blazor or for ASP.NET Core web apps or ASP.NET Core web APIs. You can find out more about using Blazor to create beautiful web applications using .NET by visiting blazor.net. ASP.NET Core is the open source framework for building web applications that extends the .NET developer platform with tools and libraries for building web applications. ASP.NET Core supports industry standard authentication protocols and performs faster than any popular framework and can be scaled using Docker containers. ASP.NET Core features real-time bi-directional communication including high-frequency messages from server-side code to connected clients with SignalR. ASP.NET Core applications can be Model View Controller, or MVC, with models and controllers in C-sharp, and views in Razor, or combined with Razor pages. You can find out more about ASP.NET Core to create web applications using .NET by visiting ASP.NET. ASP.NET Core is also the open source framework for building REST APIs with .NET using the same platforms and patterns or side-by-side -side with ASP.NET Core web applications. ASP.NET Core has first-class support for HTTPS and built-in support for JSON web tokens, along with policy-based authorization to define powerful access control rules. ASP.NET Core is designed for modern web experiences, allowing endpoints to automatically serialize output to correctly format a JSON without special configuration. ASP.NET Core not only supports controllers, but also minimal APIs for a simplified approach to building fast HTTP APIs with minimal code and configuration. You can find out more about ASP.NET Core Web APIs at .net.microsoft.com forward slash apps forward slash ASP.NET forward slash APIs. What is Windows Presentation Foundation? Windows Presentation Foundation, or WPF, allows developers using modern .NET and c -sharp to write applications targeting Windows Desktop, from Windows 7 to the latest Windows 11. WPF was first introduced in 2006 as part of the legacy .NET framework, but it is possible to bring those applications up to date and take advantage of the latest features of .NET. Windows Presentation Foundation allows developers to build a WPF application natively on Windows with Blazor Hybrid, allowing components to be reused across platforms. Install .NET Desktop Development Workload for Visual Studio to create a WPF application where you can drag and drop controls in the design view or compose XAML. You can find source code and how to get started with Windows Presentation Foundation or WPF at github.com forward slash dot net forward slash WPF. XAML 
or extensible application markup language is an XML-based declarative markup language that can define user interface objects along with rotations, animations, or other effects. XAML enables developers to decouple implementation of an application, including events, business objects, and other code in C-sharp from the design and user interface of an application. XAML allows developers to data bind from source values to target properties, including converting values to present data to users or allow interaction with data from users. XAML supports vector-based controls that can be scaled, along with media elements such as vector or raster images or lines and shapes, with a variety of brushes. XAML makes it possible to completely customize the look and feel of an application without impacting the implementation of an application. WPF applications can use a toolbox of standard user interface controls such as button, checkbox, combo box, and text box that can be dropped in the design view or typed in the XAML view and can be styled as needed. WPF application standard controls and others can be customized completely beyond just simple styling to create a custom appearance and structure of a control or even control the visual behavior of a control. WPF applications can have flexible and responsive layouts such as grid with fluid resizing of elements or stack elements horizontally or vertically with stack panel along with many more layout designs. WPF applications support custom user controls for usable layout elements and templated controls that support customization of appearance and behavior of custom controls. WPF applications can take advantage of XAML created for legacy WPF or .NET framework or leverage third-party controls designed for modern WPF with the latest .NET. Let's look at a demo of using Windows Presentation Foundation integrating Blazor Hybrid along with integrating an ASP.NET Web App and an ASP.NET Web API in an unconventional way. Here's the solution for our demo. We have two applications, a desktop application and a web application, along with a couple of class libraries. Let's run the desktop application. And this will load a WPF application. Once that's loaded, you can see it's a simple notes application. I can double click on the note. I can change the color, save that, double click on it again, put the note back. This is basically a simple application using WPF. But what else can you do? Let's switch over to Microsoft Edge. Here we have a Swagger UI. Why do we have a Swagger UI for a WPF application? In fact, this WPF application is leveraging the ASP.NET Core Web API. For example, we have this get the notes. And I can try it out. I can execute it. And we can see our response body here for our note that we've added. What else can we do? We can also switch over to another Edge window. And this is actually showing a web application running from our WPF application, showing the same note. I can even click on the note. I can see the contents. I can even change the color. I can save that. And it shows the color change. So here's an ASP.NET Core web application running from our WPF application. So although you're not really supposed to do this, you can pretty much do whatever you like in a WPF application as long as it's supported by .NET itself. Okay, we can close that, and we can close that, and we can close our application. And we have the other application, which we can set as the startup application. And we can run that. And this is an ASP.NET call web application, this time running directly. So once that's loaded, we should see our notes with the changes we made before. And we can click on it and put the control back to yellow. So this is a web application, but the actual control itself is still a WPF application, which again is something you can do, although it's only supported on Windows. Then we'll just close our application. And that was our desktop application and our web application. Let's take a look at what those are like. So we switch over to the desktop application and load the main window.xaml. 
Here we have the design view and the XAML view. Then the XAML view, we can see a grid. And we have an items control, which contains the notes themselves. We switch over to the resources view. We can see the XAML for the resources. And this gives away another secret. The actual control that we were seeing that was allowing us to edit the notes, for example, in the WPF application was actually a Blazor component. And we can see it here. So if we open up this Blazor directory, and we look at this upsert.razor, we can see it takes advantage of this note input. And if we open this and show the note input, this is the control we saw with a title, content, and background. So in fact, this was a Blazor hybrid application, and you didn't even know it. We also have the Razor pages. So this was the uh, ASP.NET web application that was being rendered from the application itself. We have our index page, which shows the layout, allows us to create a new note and save a new note, as well as an edit control. Very similar to the Blazor component, but this time written in Razor. We can also see Converter, which allowed us to convert the background color to allow it to be used in the note as well. So this is used for data binding. If you look at the web application, it's basically structured exactly the same as the Razor component of the WPF application. And in fact, it's using exactly the same controls and code. Okay, finally, let's take a look at our libraries. So we open up this one. We have a model for our note with some properties for the title, content, and background. And that was what was being bound to in our application. We also have an application provider and a notes provider. And this notes provider is using SQLite to store and load the notes. And it's also taking advantage of new features like the primary constructors from .NET 8 and C Sharp 12. And we have methods here to create add, get, a note, and so on. If we take a look at the other class library, we can see there's the controls here with just one control in it. And this is our note control. So this is the control we saw in all parts of the application that looks like a note. So we've got a path here to describe the layout. And then we have some code here to actually create the control itself. So this is a user control. And it's actually using C Sharp to create the layout rather than pure XAML, which is something you can do as well. And there's plenty of definitions here to actually describe the layout. And it also has its own properties, which define the layout for showing the title and the content, and of course, the background color as well. And that's it. That's our application. So this is a WPF application, which also takes advantage of Blazor Hybrid to so create the dialogues and the actual elements that you input the title and content into. They also had an ASP.NET Core Web API being served straight from a WPF application in an unconventional way. And it also served its own ASP.NET Core Web application, also in an unconventional way. But we also could take advantage of an ASP.NET Core Web application itself to serve a WPF application component. So we're mixing and matching a few things here, but again, this is the power of the .NET ecosystem. We could take advantage of any feature anywhere as long as it's supported. .NET is the open source cross-platform framework for Microsoft, allowing developers to develop applications and services for any device or platform, such as web and desktop. Windows Presentation Foundation to create WPF applications with .NET desktop development workload installed, targeting Windows desktop from Windows 7 to Windows 11. WPF applications enable developers to create applications with decoupled user interface from any implementation in code and bring them together with data binding. WPF applications allow developers to use a variety of standard vector-based controls or create custom user or templated controls for their applications. Developers can leverage functionality from across the .NET ecosystem, including Blazor Hybrid, to create modern WPF applications. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this talk about Windows Presentation Foundation with .NET from tutorialer.com slash talks. Here you can find links to the resources used in this talk.